Fistula is something that we have defined before, and the fistula is uh, a basic definition is a communication between two cavities, and this communication usually uh, epithelialized and contains the granulation tissue. Uh, for um, predisposing factors for having an, an obviously interior cutaneous is between the bowel and the skin or the external environment. Okay, so these are the two cavities: the external environment, the bigger cavity and also the valve in the smaller cavity. So what are the risks of uh, having this anterior cutaneous fistula? So let's say if this is the um, bowel and we have sort of a wound or maybe sort of a certain disease that leads to perforation or we have done anastomosis. So there are some risk factors that can lead to, that can re increase the risk of having uh, this um, fistula. And that would be presence of a foreign body just around the fistula right there can increase the risk of having this and also distal obstruction in here. So distal obstruction and also having a foreign body exposure to radiation or radiotherapy if there is any neoplasm and also Crohn's disease and another risk factor, all right? Or if it's a shorter tract, two centimeter can easily be formed. So the complication of uh, a fistula and it's something that we have to deal with um, uh, and treat it or, or even be very protective. You will, you will notice here that in the management there is a word called the SNAP. So it's basically uh, S is for the skin and sepsis and N is for nutrition, A is for the anatomy and P is for the plan. So the S um, N, which is the skin and the sepsis and the N nutrition, that will remind you of the possible complications in addition to fluid um, and the electrolyte imbalance, all right? So we have a few things. One is we're talking about extent exocoriation and necrosis, and also you have the sepsis as another risk factor. And in addition to that, there is malnutrition and also um, um, another thing such as fluid and electrolyte imbalance as well, all right? Great, so the treatment here, we're gonna focus on something called the SNAP. So one, we need to make good control of the sepsis, and two um, is um, nutrition, skin, and then nutrition, and then we can make anatomical assessment of this anterior cutaneous fistula, and finally, plan your treatment, all right? And we're gonna talk about this in a little bit more detail. So in terms of sepsis, as we all know, the treatment of sepsis, we're basically following the A to E approach, all right? and giving your patient the sepsis sex. And remember the sepsis sex is the word buffalo. We're taking bloods, including blood culture. We're doing the urine output and urine uh, catheter and the urine dip as well and urine culture as well. And F, doing, giving the patient fluids. And um, the A is do, giving the patient antibiotic. And uh, um, L is doing the lactate and that's a throw on ABG. And O is giving the patient oxygen if they are desaturating. Great. And in terms of the skin, we need to protect the skin uh, from the excoriation. Nutritional support, they will need to be referred to a dietitian because they will need to um, uh, sort of uh, follow up this patient. And uh, the, this will be based on the body weight. And we have a, a complete scenario on how to manage the um, nutrition of the patient in a general surgery. Um, the daily requirements is 25 to 30 kilocalorie per kg per day in a normal person uh, is 45 to uh, 55 uh, for patient uh, following an extensive trauma or any sort of stress. Okay, we're going to give them like normal diet like we normally give to anyone. Uh, anatomical assessment, we can do one of two things, which, whether it's a CT scan or a fistulogram to delineate the anatomy of this fistula. We're basically trying to localize where is it and if there is any distal obstruction to it, if you remember that was one of the risks for uh, having a fistula at the first place, all right? Uh, the other thing is uh, the plan. The, the plan is one of two things, whether it's a conservative management or um, a surgical management. So around 60% of the fistula will heal by its own, and we don't have to really do anything with that. Um, um, I mean, apart from treating the sepsis and uh, the anatomical assessment and all the other things that we mentioned. Um, however, we sometimes will need to intervene surgically uh, for the 40%, okay?
and the surgery would be resection and anastomosis. Uh, you can also do exteriorization through formation of uh, stoma and later on uh, recommunication. Okay, great. Um, the last question, which is quite similar as well, what are the factors preventing the spontaneous healing? So it will be the risk factors for having the fist at the first place. That will be uh, for presence of foreign body to presence of radiation and also three, the sepsis was not treated adequately or a presence of Crohn's disease, presence of neoplasm, okay, and um, all these kind of things. Other thing, malnutrition, we mentioned the sepsis, we can mention malnutrition, and um, yeah, I, I think that would be probably it for the factors preventing uh, spontaneous healing. So that covers the anterior cutaneous fistula, and now we know how to deal with anterior cutaneous fistula. So anterior cutaneous fistula, we talked about uh, the causes of anterior cutaneous fistula, and we know it's a foreign body, radiation, distal obstruction, and so on. And we know about the complication, and we remember that by the SNAP protocol, which comes under the management. And the SNAP is a scan and sepsis and nutrition and assessment or anatomical delineation. And P is for planning. We know in plan, like 60% will heal if we have done the SNA, and the rest, which is 40%, will need surgery. And the surgery will be resection and primary anastomosis or resection and formation of a stoma, okay? Uh, we also know the factors that delay the healing of an anterior cutaneous fistula, and that will be the uh, radiation and all the things that we mentioned that were the cause of the anterior cutaneous fistula at the first place. Thank you very much, and that covers anterior cutaneous fistula.